Welcome grade 11s to this session on Newton's law of universal gravitation. In today's lesson, we will investigate the weighty topic of weight. Newton was a very keen astronomer and wanted to explain why planets follow fixed orbits around the Sun. He also wondered why the Moon remained orbiting the Earth. To explain all these things, he introduced his idea of a gravitational force field. He showed that there is a gravitational force of attraction between all objects that have mass in the universe. Newton showed that the further the distance between the centers of objects, the weaker the gravitational force of attraction. And the larger the mass of both the objects, the stronger the gravitational force. In our solar system, the Sun is the most massive object. The Earth has a large mass too, but is a lot smaller than the Sun. Even though there is a large distance between the Earth and the Sun, there is still a large gravitational force between these two objects. It is this force, due to gravity, that keeps us in a fixed orbit around the Sun. There is also a force of attraction between the Earth and the Moon. Even though the Moon has much less mass than the Sun, the Moon is much closer to Earth and the gravitational force is therefore stronger. We notice the effect of this gravitational force when we study the changing tides of the oceans. Now, Newton's idea about the force due to gravity do not only apply to large objects like the Sun, the Earth and the Moon, but on any object in the universe that has mass. So when an object with a small mass like a ball is released from a position above the Earth's surface, there is a small force of attraction between the ball and the Earth. This gravitational force causes the ball to accelerate downwards towards the center of the Earth. We call the gravitational force acting on the ball the weight of the ball. Weight is the force due to gravity acting on a body. Do you notice that weight is acting in a particular direction? This means that weight is a vector. Remember, all vectors have both magnitude and direction. Now, in this lesson, we want to see how this gravitational force of attraction, weight, is related to mass and to the gravitational acceleration. Let's start by looking at the relationship between gravitational acceleration and weight. Remember, objects accelerate uniformly towards the Earth with an acceleration of 9,81 meters per second squared downwards. We represent this with the symbol G and we will approximate this value as 10 meters per second squared downwards. Please note that we sometimes use an approximate value for g for simplicity when we explain the concepts. However, when you do calculations, you need to use the more accurate value of 9,8 meters per second squared. A juggler knows that he can catch the balls at specified times because they accelerate downwards at this fixed rate of 10 meters per second squared on Earth. Will the balls return at the same rate if he juggles on the moon? Remember, the magnitude of the gravitational acceleration on the Earth is about 1,6 meters per second squared. Because of this, the balls will take six times as long to rise to their maximum height and fall down again. It's only when we consider leaving Earth and exploring space that we become aware of the magnitude of gravitational acceleration because this will affect the weight of objects. If you know that the acceleration due to gravity is only 1,6 meters per second squared downwards on the Moon, what does this tell you about the weight of an object on the Moon? Remember Newton's law of universal gravitation states that the gravitational force of attraction is dependent on the mass of both objects. The Moon has a much smaller mass than the Earth. So on the Moon, there will still be a force due to gravity acting on any object. But this force will be smaller on the Moon than it is on Earth. Can you see that there must be a relationship between the weight of an object and the gravitational acceleration? When the gravitational acceleration is large, like on Earth, the force due to gravity is large. But on the Moon, where the gravitational acceleration is smaller, the force due to gravity is also smaller. Now that we looked at the topic of weight, let's look at the idea of weightlessness.
Have you ever experienced the feeling of suspension above the seat of an amusement park ride? If so, this sensation is the same that astronauts experience when orbiting the Earth. Not only is this sensation of weightlessness the same, but the causes are also the same. Weightlessness is not a difficult subject, but consider the following true or false questions about weightlessness. True or false? Astronauts in orbit around the Earth are weightless because space is a vacuum and there is no gravity in a vacuum. Well, that is false because gravity does operate in a vacuum. True or false? Astronauts are weightless because there is no gravity in space and they do not weigh anything. You probably guessed that that one is also false. In fact, it's not true to say that they do not weigh anything, even though they are feeling weightless. Here's another one. True or false? Astronauts are weightless because space is a vacuum and there is no air resistance in a vacuum. Gravity does not depend on air resistance. False again. True or false? Astronauts are weightless because the astronauts are far from Earth's surface at a location where gravitation has minimal effect. False as well. To understand the idea of weightlessness, we have to investigate the forces involved. We cannot feel gravity. What we can feel is the reaction force of the ground when we stand on it, or the reaction force of a chair when we sit. This is an example of Newton's third law. Weightlessness is the feeling we experience when there is no contact forces. Weightlessness is only a feeling, and you still weigh as much as you always do. So, here's a good question to puzzle your friends. How much do you weigh when you are weightless? Make sure that you can explain the answer. I hope that you have enjoyed our lesson on weight and weightlessness. Have a look on the Mindset website for revision tasks and more videos. Thank you very much. Goodbye.